We're here in Philadelphia at Independence Hall where our Constitution was written and signed. How did America come up with the Constitution that is the envy of the world? Well, it wasn't easy. In fact, there came a point when the 55 delegates to the Constitutional Convention were about to call it quits. But then, as secular historian Catherine Drinker Bowen describes it, there was a miracle at Philadelphia. With the convention going badly, some of the delegates leaving in disgust, the elder statesman Ben Franklin rose to address the remaining delegates on June 28, 1787. In James Madison's notes on the debates and proceedings of the convention, we read the record of Ben Franklin's plea that they petition God for help in their moment of need. Here's what he said. Mr. President, the small progress we have made after four or five weeks, close attendance and continual reasonings with each other, our different sentiments on almost every question, several of the last producing as many no's as eyes, is methinks a melancholy proof of the imperfection of human understanding. How has it happened, sir, that we have not hitherto once thought of humbly applying to the Father of Lights to illuminate our understanding? And have we now forgotten that powerful friend? Or do we imagine that we no longer need his assistance? I have lived, sir, a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it probable that an empire can raise without his aid? We have been assured, sir, in the sacred writings that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. I firmly believe this, and I also believe that without his concurring aid, we shall succeed in this political building no better than the builders of Babel. I therefore beg leave to move that henceforth prayers imploring the assistance of heaven and its blessing on our deliberations be held in this assembly every morning before we proceed to business. Immediately after Franklin spoke, Roger Sherman of Connecticut seconded that motion for prayer. Many were deeply moved. New Jersey delegate Jonathan Dayton reported this. He said, quote, the doctor sat down and neither did I behold a countenance at once so dignified and delighted as that of Washington at the close of the address, nor were the members of the convention generally less affected. What is important to note is that Ben Franklin's passionate plea served to break the impasse here. Edmund Jennings Randolph of Virginia proposed a compromise measure, quote, that a sermon be preached at the request of the convention on 4th of July, the anniversary of independence, and thenceforward prayers be used in ye convention every morning. Ben Franklin himself seconded this substitute motion. Representative Dayton of New Jersey reported that when the delegates met again on July the 2nd, much of the acrimony was gone. He said, quote, we assembled again and every unfriendly feeling had been expelled and a spirit of conciliation had been cultivated. And ultimately, it became a reality because now Congress begins each day with prayer by a paid chaplain. It's somewhat of an exaggeration, though, to say that our constitutional government began as a result of a prayer meeting here in Philadelphia. But Dr. Franklin's call for prayer did play a critical role in reminding those delegates as a vital point that without God's help, all their efforts would be in vain. This redirection and their response could be viewed as the miracle in Philadelphia. All right.